Okay. Hello, hello, crafty peeps. Welcome back to my channel, Crafty Ish Kristen. Today we have a whip and chatty rant. W I P whip stands for work in progress. My work in progress is a brand new start that I just started last night. It is It's Electric by Diamond Art Club and it measures 76 centimeters by 51 centimeters. I am working on it sideways. And right now, this right here is the bottom left corner of the canvas. That's I am using my kitten up kitten tray, my Calb Sparkles release papers, and my pink Diamond Art Club pen with their new six multi-placer. And I am really liking it. Uh, I did have to wrap it in some washi because it was a little wiggly. And my husband did have to glue in the new metal tip because it was very wobbly. But so far, everything is working fab you -less. So, let's get this started. If you want to pull out something you're working on. Nope. <clears throat> nope. Okay, let's try that again. <clears throat> So pull out something you're working on or use this as a podcast and go about your daily chores, whatever you want to do, boo. So we are going to get started with the hashtag symbol, or as I like to refer to it as the pound sign, because it only became the hashtag symbol. Uh, I don't even know when, but sorry, when I was a kid, that was the pound sign. So... I am currently drinking my overpriced tea that came in a giant light bulb. Uh, I promised my son we would stop at the local tea place because I, he's never had tea. So I, I think he just wanted the drink in the light bulb, honestly, uh, because he is not a boba tree, boba tree, boba tea drinker. He's never had it. Um, yeah, so he got a mango lemonade and I got a mango tea because, uh, every kind of like cool, delicious sounding drink they had, had milk in it. And there was one that sounded really good and it kind of sounded like the, the Starbucks refreshers or like the pink drink and the mango, the dragon drink and stuff like that. Well, I'm like, okay, so do you have, you know, is it just milk or is it milk replacement? You know, or you like have almond milk or some kind of other milks? He goes, well, you know, the, the pink drink has coconut milk. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll get that. And he goes, well, but it does have regular milk mixed in it as well, as well as some dry milk. I'm like, seriously? So, yeah, like, it made me think of that Friends episode where Ross and Rachel have broken well the, I, I guess they broke up and then he you know decided to go sleep with someone else and so they were at the apartment and they were talking about it and she was like I'm gonna get a pizza and he's like oh hey can I get in on that pizza and she's like yeah I guess and he's like just you know I just don't want anchovies and so she's like telling him yes put extra anch extra anchovies on it and he's like that's fine I guess I'll just pick it off and she's like could you actually just chop some up and puree it directly into the sauce that's what I felt like at the tea place, because it's like, you could have just had non-milk, a non-milk drink, but no, you have to add dry powdered milk into the, into the drink. Okay. So, yeah. It's a little pricey for, I mean, it's basically mango tea. It's got tea with some mango puree. I don't know. I was like, I do not need to go back there, so... My son's like, this is the best tea I've ever had. I'm like, better be for like, after I had to tip, because, you know, they put that tip line on everything now, and you feel like you have to. I don't know. I always feel like I'm obligated if there's the tip thing. So when all was said and done, it's like his drink is like $13. I'm like, that is not worth $13. I mean, that's more expensive than Starbucks, for God's sakes. And Starbucks is overpriced. So we had to go buy pants for back to school. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, I mean, I'm excited, but I'm not excited because oh, he's going to be in high school and 
the little one's going to be in third grade and ugh, it's just too much too much so we had to go to old navy to buy pants because he's getting so tall but he is very very skinny and they have the adjustable waists still so um but i was like okay go in the go in the changing room and try them on and you know come out and show me what they look like well, i'm sitting there and i'm like what the hell is he doing well he tried them all on and he like, you know, he said he ran in place and he jumped and he squatted and he goes, yeah, no, they all fit. And I'm like, I wanted to see them. I wanted to make sure that they're, you know, not too short because that's the problem we have right now is that all of his pants are too short because he grew like two inches in like a month. And so he's like, no, they fit. I ran in place. I squatted. They're all good. I'm like, all right, I guess you can just try them on for me when we get home. And if we have to bring them back, then you can come back with me and retry on new pants. So that's a little frustrating, but you know, teenagers. Teenagers. So I just finished uh, my current work in progress last night. I am so excited to finally have that done. I guess I've only been working on it for, I want to say a month, but between, I was going between, you know, a square and a round. And so I didn't finish it as fast as I probably could have if I wasn't working on two projects at once. But so I will have a post review and a kit down. Uh, hopefully next week for that. So that'll be, that'll be good. Um, and I had to fix my spare storage because it was a mess. Because I had only originally had like a, like a cardboard box. I mean like a decorative cardboard box. Um, and I just kind of had some of the baggies with the, you know, the cheapy Amazon stickers in them and uh, they were just kind of lined up willy-nilly, but it was a very effective way. So I actually had to buy all new bags because, spoiler alert, I didn't measure how big a photo box actually is. So <laughs> they were way too big. And so I had to put in like little dividers and stuff. So you guys will get to see that when I do my kit down. <clears throat> so we had to do a bunch of yard work over the weekend and my husband mixed a concoction of vinegar dawn dishwashing soap and salt on our gravel we have a bunch of gravel areas at our house and so you know we're trying not to spray a bunch of toxic chemicals because you know we go outside and a lot of wildlife out there so he went and sprayed it and it looks like it killed everything but I think it just kills like the top level of the the weeds in the grass which I mean is better than nothing because at least it's not like all sticking up everywhere and looking all crazy uh, so we had to do that I had a bunch of plants that needed to be replanted and I hate the fact that I can go outside for, I mean, we were out, I was out there for maybe two hours and I'm like the messiest gardener ever. I just, I get dirt everywhere. I get dirt up my nose. I get dirt in my socks and my shoes and I instantly have to take a shower and I, I always forget to trim my fingernails. And so the gloves like push on your fingernails and then it makes your whole hand just like hurt. So that was my stupidity. And then of course later I'm sitting there going, because I tend to get allergies when I go outside and I forgot to take, you know, Benadryl or, or anything before I went outside. It's like, ugh. yeah, so not my finest moment. And then later we had a, like one of those pest guys on a Segway come up to the door and it's like hello we're in your area and 
We wanted to know if you wanted to engage in our services and you can get a special deal. And I'm like, yeah, no. And I always, I always feel so guilty, like just being like, no, thank you. I don't want any. Cause, and I always get like sucked into conversation and then it's like even more awkward to, you know, tell them to go away. So yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Well, it looks like you have some, some rodent holes. I'm like, yeah, probably, you know, we, we put traps out and stuff, but you know, we live in a rural area, so it's not... You know, they live outside. That's where they live. But I wanted to ask him if it would prevent, you know, like little moths or anything from coming in the house because we have these tiny little, like, I don't know if they're mobs or carpet mobs or I don't know what they are. But we keep having them just like. You just find them at night. All of a sudden, it's like you turn on the lights and they just start flittering here and there. And the cats love them because they want to play with them. And so I got a very embarrassing video of my son, which I will not post. But he was in his room trying to kill the moths <laughs> with a pillow. And he's like, yeah, yeah, come at me, come at me. And, you know, trying to video and not laugh hysterically because it's just so darn funny so I did not ask the pest guy if it would prevent moths from coming into my house so my son has to try to beat them to death with a pillow but I wanted to yeah but speaking of gardening we also my husband bought this like super high powered leaf blower and the thing weighs a ton and it's, I mean, it's like really powerful. And so he let, he let our son use it. And so he put the backpack thing on and he's holding it and he pushes the, I don't know, the trigger. And it's so powerful that it just like kind of threw him backwards a little. And it just reminded me of that SpongeBob episode. I think Oh, it was the first Spongebob where Spongebob is like playing with a leaf blower that he found. Yeah, it just, I just could not stop laughing. I was like, whoa, that is, that is Spongebob right there. Ah. Go, 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 go. So, I am actually really impressed because I can see all the symbols on this canvas without my light pad. Usually... I have a hard time without my light pad. But these are, I think it helps that they're so bright. There are a lot of ABs in this kit. I think I have a, if it's not out now, it will be out very soon, um, an unboxing and kitting up of this kit. It was actually one of the first videos that I recorded like a month ago and just hadn't posted yet so it's a uh, it's it's kind of awkward i will admit so be kind and watch it and if you like this content and other content that i've made please consider liking and subscribing it does not cost anything and it helps the youtube powers that be whatever they're called um it lets them know that they should recommend it to other crafty people or people who want to watch other people do crafts while they do boring stuff. So yes, I appreciate it very, very, very much. Let's see, let's get this one. Oh my gosh, that was, that was some skill right there. Whoa. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay. My husband and I had a, it was not an argument, but it was definitely a slight disagreement the other day. And maybe some other people can shine their opinion in on 
this topic. So, ooh, I just hit my face on the camera mount. Awesome. I think that there is a right way and a wrong way to put toilet paper on the roll. I think that the toilet paper should, it's, you know, let's say here's the wall. I think the toilet paper should go over. Because if you go to ho a hotel or something, they always have the toilet paper like that. And it's like, they always have it like, you know, folded into a nice little triangle or something. And so I think that's the way it's supposed to be. He said that because he grew up with dogs and cats, that the toilet paper is supposed to be going over and then come out from underneath. So if something tries to scratch it and roll it, it doesn't completely unroll the whole roll. Well, I do think that's a valid concern. I just, I don't think that's the way you're supposed to put toilet paper on the roll. So please let me know what you think because yeah, I try not to switch the toilet paper when he puts it on, but most times I do because I just think he's wrong. Oh my gosh, why am I? These are so crooked. Yeah, this kid has a lot of ABs. I think it has four ABs and there are some areas that are just pure ABs. Like one, two, three, and four in this kit are ABs. So this all here, there's four, one, two, then some more fours over here. And then you have all these threes and all these white fours in mix in and then more threes and then more threes and fours and threes and twos. I mean, it's gonna be really, 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 really sparkly, but I'm gonna wanna bash my face on the side of the wall because I just, me and ABs do not get along. I, I, I you know, I've tried, so many different kinds of wax and putties and this and that and I always feel like I just have like maybe a a five minute window where the ABs go on my pen perfectly where they don't rip the the wax or the putty or whatever out they don't get stuck they come off beautifully I have like a five minute thing. And then other than that, it is just a constant, constant struggle. I, I don't know how people enjoy putting them down and don't just want to cry. So the best thing, well, I don't even know what the best thing I've tried. I've tried so many different things. Right now I am trying the Quake Hold Clear. I have it right here actually. So it's like, looks like this clear stuff and it's clear quake hold gel. And it, it works, but it just comes off on your drills. And that's one thing I don't like about a lot of the waxes and the putties is that I feel like it's messy. The only thing that I've really been able to like, if I hadn't found glue dots, I don't know if I would have kept diamond painting, honestly, because the putties, all the putties that I've used, all the different waxes that I've tried, I tried the, you know, what is it? The other quake hold, like the putty. And it just, it just makes a mess. It's always like splooging out of the, the tips and Oopsie, and getting all over, like, and I get them all over my canvas. And oh my gosh, that is just too much. Oh my gosh. Um, I just make like a giant mess with it. And so I, I want to be one of those people who's like, yes, I have lemon buttercream meringue sherbet putty in my pen. And I'm like, no, I've tried. I've tried a few different brands and they just, they just don't work for me. I wish they did because I want to smell the delicious smells while I'm damning painting. That sounds amazing, but I just, I can't do it. All right. I think I got all the magic. I call this symbol magic lollipop. I don't know why, but I think I, 
first I thought it was like a magic wand and then I thought it was a lollipop. So I just combined the two and two magic lollipop. Oops, I'm spilling. spilling. Okay, put that back. Look up a new topic. Okay, 20 minutes, okay. I am gonna do, one, two, L, 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 L. Let's see, all right, I am gonna do Chubby L next. Oh, I just took a drink of that tea and I swear it makes, it tastes like soap. Because some people can't have cilantro because it tastes like soap. I'm really grateful that I don't have that problem, but something about this tea just, I don't know. Ooh. Ooh, I'm not going to do that again. The other night we were in my daughter's room and... She's got a bunch of, you know, play kitchen type stuff where, you know, she's got the, you know, the fake hamburgers, fake pizza. She's got like a little fake sushi set and like a little, you know, fake knife set and coffee maker. She's got the whole, the whole shebang. And when we were at the ocean the last time, we were at one of the restaurants and we were ordering our food and... We were at the little checkout counter and the checkout guy, he was, he was super cool. I like, I love it when people interact with kids and aren't like jerks and, you know, actually can hold a conversation. And so he was just kind of joking about different things and because my kids are like, no, I want this. No, I want this. No, I want this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just pick something. And he's like, it's fine. It's fine. No worries. And. So we were kind of just talking back and forth and he said, he said, you know, I've, I used to work as a line cook, uh, you know, back when I was in college and he said, my favorite thing to do when, um, we were in the kitchen and somebody would drop something like somebody would break a glass or they would, you know, drop a, a bowl or there'd be a huge clatter. He said, it's my favorite thing to do was to yell out. Oh my God, there's so much blood. And he said, and because every once in a while, you would get someone running back there all in a panic, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, is everybody okay? And then, you know, you just start laughing and be like, oh no, sorry, we were just joking around. So my daughter has taken that to be, that is what she should be doing when she is making us food in her play kitchen. So she'll have her little play knife or she'll drop something and she'll be like, oh my God, there's so much blood. I'm like, oh geez. I mean, could be worse, right? But <laughs> I was like, just don't do that out in public because people are freaking weird, you know? You just, you don't know how people are gonna react to, to stuff like that, you know? Like there's a lot of, you know, good natured people, obviously, but you don't know. So we, we were watching, well, bro, no, no, okay, start over. <clears throat> I was reading on our local news page on Facebook and it said that at our local airport they had since the beginning of 2023 they had found 67 
weapons. And the weapon is the, the type that, you know, starts with a G. I don't want to say the word just in case it triggers somebody or I don't know if YouTube flags things. Um, they found 67 weapons that have bullets in people's carry-ons and on their actual bodies since the beginning of the year. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, people actually think they're going to get away with bringing a weapon to the airport. I mean, come on. Oh my God, I just blasted those freaking diamonds into my hair. Awesome. It said the number one thing that people said, oh, I forgot it was in there. And I don't quite understand because, you know, like, let's say you're packing up your bag to go to the airport because you're going on a trip. So you're probably thinking, okay, you know, make sure you bring your prescriptions, toothbrush, you know, make sure you have your passport if you need it, your ID, sunscreen maybe. I mean, don't you sit there and think to yourself, oh, make sure I don't have any weapons on me. Uh, you know, because you're not allowed to bring weapons into the airport. I just, I'm like, are, either, I mean, are people that stupid? Or do they really think that they can just go through a full body scanner and a metal detector and have their bags go through a metal detector and not have somebody pick up on the fact that you have something made of metal that shoots bullets on you? So then my next thought was, okay, well, wait a minute. So what happens to the, the things that they confiscate? Because they don't give them back. You can't be like, oh, I totally forgot that I packed that. Let me go put that out in my car. No, they're not going to let you do that because uh, you can't walk through the airport with a weapon like that. And it said that... Um, it can come at a fine. So the people who forget these things can get a fine from between like 2000 and almost $15,000. I mean, is it worth it? I, I just, I don't know. I, <laughs> I was just, I, I couldn't, I still can't understand how in the world, like, I, I, I mean, maybe people just are really stupid. I don't know. I would think if that's something that I normally had on my person and I was going somewhere where there is a lot of security and protocols that I would probably be like, hmm, yeah, uh, maybe I should leave that at home. But I mean, like my husband pointed out, he goes, there are so many people out there that probably carry stuff like that on themselves every day and they just don't even think about it which is even scarier that there are that many people out there just free roaming you know packing heat I'm like oh my gosh oh i'm just glad granted we don't go places or really travel very far i'm just glad i've never been at the airport when something like that's happened because i would probably completely freak out I'd be like, nope, 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 nope. Get them. Come on, airport dog. Sick them. Sick them good. Sick them real good. But I think people, people can't bring blasty weapons in their checked luggage. I think if it's as long as it's not like loaded, I don't even know. I honestly, I just, the thought just, ugh, kind of scares me a little. But going out in public scares me a lot. So, because people are freaking nuts. People are crazy. Ooh, a few little ooh, crunch, a few little crunchy areas. Yeah, this kit has 47 colors only, and there are definitely some color blocky areas in it. 
but like this section has a decent amount of color switches. So I think the biggest, the biggest container is this one. And I actually have another bag besides this one in my drawer because it wouldn't all, it wouldn't all fit. And I did run out of, uh, Elizabeth Ward storage containers while I was kitting this up. And so I actually stole some from a different kit that I was working on and tried to switch those ones to smaller containers because I had already used some of the bigger ones up. So I do like the Elizabeth Wards. I think those are probably my favorite just because they look so pretty. And I like that you can adjust um, the size based on how many diamonds you have. I mean, because if you just have like a little piddly amount of diamonds, you don't need a giant container that's going to hold like 200, not 200,000, <laughs> 200,000 diamonds. Um, no, it's like 2,000 diamonds. <laughs> you know, you don't need... You don't need something that's going to hold that much, but I know some people don't like the Elizabeth Wards. Like I don't, I personally do not like the Tic Tac containers. I, they're just, they're little and fiddly and I've had really bad luck with them like breaking open and spilling all over. So I got, I think I got two of those when I first started diamond painting and I quickly, quickly uh, retired them once I, because I was like, no, the Elizabeth Ward's too expensive. You know, it's $30 for like a storage container. That's crazy. But I mean, now those are definitely my favorite and you can find them on Amazon sometimes on sale. Not super often, but sometimes you can find them on sale. So don't give up on that if that's what you like. And if it's not what you like, then, you know, I mean, use whatever works for you. Some people really like baggies. I, I can't use the baggies. But that's just because my cats think anything plastic is theirs to clean their teeth with and gnaw to death. So there are no baggies here. That is for sure. Okay. Pause. Toilet paper. Gardening, moth attack. Weapon. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Whoa. Sugar biscuits. Okay. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. On the Diamond Art Club Facebook group, I know there was the big cobalt toolbox craze, um, which was kind of, kind of interesting. Like I can see the allure because they are kind of cute. Uh, I did not personally go out and get one because if I wanted one, I would want the pink one. And I looked and there were no pink ones around me. So, and you couldn't order it online. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. And really, I don't need any more storage containers. I, I've got a lot of storage containers. And I actually have a few old caboodles that I have gotten over the years from like garage sales and, and stuff like that that I've used for crafting supplies. So I would rather use a caboodle <laughs> instead of a toolbox myself. But, you know, I, that's just me. I don't really have that many pens and trays and, you know, a gajillion putties and waxes and so I guess I just don't feel like I have that many supplies that I need a whole toolbox for. But I can see how it would be convenient if, like, 
you have your, your stuff for kitting up in it, or you have glue or Sharpies or, you know, extra plastic bags. And if you didn't have a dedicated space, how it might be helpful to have something portable that you can carry with you and, you know, move from point A to point B easily. So I can see how it would be convenient, but for me, it just does not make, it doesn't make sense for me. But I just think it's hilarious though, how people get so mad in these Facebook groups and they're like, this is not what this group is for. And can we stop talking about this? And it's like, dude, lighten up. I mean, it's, it's just one thing. That's what people do. They find something they think that other people will like. And, and then everybody jumps on the train. It's like when people post, you know, that there's a restock. They're like, restocks, run, run. First of all, nobody's running to the internet. Because if you're reading it on Facebook, your ass is already on the internet. So I get I get the sentiment, but it just it's one of those things where I'm just trying to not well, I do roll my eyes, but luckily no one can see me rolling my eyes at it because it just it makes me laugh. It's like dude, nobody's running. I mean, like most people need to be encouraged to spend more money on diamond paintings. <laughs> Cause yeah, I mean, people be mortgaging their houses if they could to get themselves a few more diamond paintings, it seems. It's like when people post on Facebook and they're, they're like, oh my gosh, I just got an Instant Pot. What are your favorite recipes? Ready, set, go. It's like, no, don't do that. That just sounds weird. Because nobody's sitting there like going, okay, I can't wait. I'm going to start this race to post a bunch of recipes for this person as soon as they say go. So I just don't, I don't know. Little things that just bother me and aggravate me. But that's just me. You know, maybe, maybe I'm just too ornery and uh, opinionated. <laughs> My husband said he was talking to somebody at work and they were commenting how, you know, you have to marry somebody who, who likes all the same things you do, you know, so you have stuff in common so you can go do things and have hobbies. And my husband said, he goes, no, I, I don't, I don't think that you need to find somebody where you have all the same things in common. And the guy's like, what do you mean? He said, no, you need to find somebody who hates the same things you hate. The guy's like, well, that's not very nice to say. He goes, yeah, but think about it. I mean, if one person, like, for example, if, if one person really likes mayonnaise, like, mayonnaise is their favorite condiment, and they marry somebody who does not like mayonnaise at all, that could create some, you know, some strife. But... If you find somebody who doesn't like mayonnaise and you don't like mayonnaise, it's like, oh, cool. I mean, same thing with like, you know, if you have, I mean, then there's like extreme cases, obviously. So I don't want to be sounding like, you know, you have to, you have to hate everything or, you know, you can't like some of the same things. But I mean, it's just sometimes if you have, I mean, you don't need every single thing in common. And depending on, you know, when you get married or you know, fall in love or whatever, uh, your interests are going to change because most people who get married, fall in love, start dating, I mean, not a lot of them probably don't have all the same exact interests and likes and dislikes uh, 15 years later. You know, people, people change. But I thought... I thought it was a good answer that he said you need to have somebody who who likes and dislikes the, some of the same things because like we have, you know, we have a lot of things that we both do not like and common and we have things that we do like in common. So, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with people having opposite hobbies or 
you know, one person might like to really go outside and be out in the nature and another person might be more indoorsy and that's okay too. I mean, you don't, you don't have to do every single thing together. I never, I never understood that and people are like, well, I can't do this because blah, blah, blah doesn't want to do it. It's like, so what? I mean, you don't have to have everything in common. I don't think so. I mean, and that's, you know, that's obviously my opinion. Um, so yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, growing up, my dad would go out and work on the Jeep or whatever he was doing. You know, and my mom would be doing crafts inside. So, you know, I grew up watching them and they had different hobbies and they were both totally fine with that. I, I don't, I don't want to spend 24 hours a day with someone. <laughs> like, I don't, I think I would get a little annoyed and frustrated by somebody constantly needing my attention or I don't know and maybe that's just an only child thing too because I grew up you know I had friends and stuff but you know I was alone a lot and I was totally fine with that because I had hobbies I could I could entertain myself I mean didn't have the internet where you can just go and watch YouTube videos for five or six hours at a time to to kill the day away. I mean, we had TV, TV, but I got boring real quick because it's the same old crap all the time. So. Oh my goodness. Come on, little squares. I don't know how old this kit is that I'm working on. Um, I did just buy it a few months ago, so I'm assuming it's new work canvas and spacing and stuff like that, but I honestly don't know. So everything seems to be fitting okay. My, my wonky placement is partially because of just the fact that my cell phone is like almost right in front of my face. So I'm having to kind of bob and weave around that. But other than that, it all seems to be going fairly well. And ooh, ooh, super exciting. I picked up my diamond paintings that I dropped off at Michael's last week that were dry mounted and they all came out very nicely. I actually really haven't even looked at them because we just got home. Oh, whoa, those went all over the dang place oh my gosh so I'm excited to to see those and maybe I'll do a video or something with that um, I had four paintings dry mounted and it was a little over $40 so it was not as expensive as framing that's for darn sure so I had Let's see, I had Private Collection dry mounted and I had a Fat Cat from Dreamer Designs and Cosmic Tree, what was Cosmic Tree of Life or Cosmic Tree of Dreams? That's Dreamer Designs and then uh, Jasper C from Diamond Art Club. So I'm and it was, I was shocked how sparkly the diamonds looked at Michael's because of all the, the overhead lights. I was like, dude, I need to get some more lights in my house because it looks downright flat and boring at home compared to how much sparkling is going on in here. Wow, these are so crooked, but I cannot, I'll fix them later. I can't fix them right now. <laughs> uh, no one said this was like a, a how-to for diamond painting. You can use it as a, what well, maybe not to do. Let's see, okay, I will do one more color and then I think that is good for the moment. Let's do a happy color. Oh, uh, let's do bubble butt. So this is what I call bubble butt because it just makes me think of 
somebody with their body turned to the side and their butt sticking out. So, what is other, what is other? What is, oh my gosh, I can't talk. What are some of you working on? Have you had any finishes lately or any disasters? Disasters are okay too. I mean, it happens, right? Or have you been enabled by something on Diamond Art Club or a different company to buy? Did you buy a tube, a cope? Ugh, can't talk. Have you been enabled in, have you been enabled to buy something from Diamond Art Club or a different company recently? Did you get one of the cobalt tool boxes? Let me know. Or did you want one and couldn't get your hands on one? I can only imagine the people at Lowe's are like, why are all these people coming in here and like getting so excited about this toolbox? It's like, oh, are you, are you this? Or do you work on this? Like, no, I'm a diamond painter and I'm going to put all my pens in it. <laughs> They'd be like, okay, um, whatever, I guess. Right. I mean, you can use the toolbox for anything. So good for you. Well, that is it for today. I think I'm going to finish my overpriced flashy tea that tastes like soap. Hopefully I don't make, no. That is it for me today. I am going to finish off there. I'm going to finish my overpriced flashing tea that kind of tastes like soap. And hopefully I don't regret that choice later. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, for participating, for liking, subscribing, sharing, hearting, farting, whatever you need to do. I appreciate it very much. And I will see. No. Thank you so much for watching for subscribing, for liking, for hearting, for farting, for doing all the things. Truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Big awkward hugs. Bye.